Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, the astoundingly adequate Ryan. And for my first trick, I'm going to get rid of this other glove. I have no idea where the first one got to. Uh, second trick, let's talk about Tricarian Dalgard's Gifts, which isn't quite an expansion to Tricarian Legends of Illusion. It's labeled add-on pack. The more full expansion is coming later, but Tricarian was a Kickstarter game and what I'm told is that this was actually part of the base game, but they kind of peeled it out because Tricarian got a little bit uh, uh, overstuffed, you might say. There's a lot going on in the game. So this add-on pack, if you bought the full deluxe uh, collector's edition, whatever it was, with all the bells and whistles, you got this stuff in there. If you didn't, this product is available separately at retail. So. Let me take a look at what's in the box and let me teach you how to play. But if you don't know what's up with Tricarian, uh, you can check out my Tricarian Legends of Illusion how to play video link up here, link at the end of the video, link down in the description. Ah, let's take a look at Dalgard's Gifts. First off, you get some component upgrades. So this big Tricarian shard replaces the flat token that you use for tracking the rounds in the base game. And then you get these little wooden magician tokens, which are absolutely great and a big improvement to the boring cylinders that come with the base game, but you only get one per player. You can really use two per player. One on the turn order track and one to mark your fame points in the theater. So you have to make the gut-wrenching decision about where these little dudes are gonna go. Okay, so on to the meat of what's in the box. Dalgard's Gifts is split into two different modules, Duel of Magicians and Magician Powers. And I'll show you what each one does separately. If you own Tricarian and you don't own Dalgard's Gifts, you may have noticed that the dark alley side of your player boards have these expansion slots down the side of them. That's a little tease that basically forces you to buy Dalgard's Gifts because if you're like me, you can't stand having expansion slots without the stuff to go in them. These slots are for the new Magician Powers. That's a deck of 90 cards separated into the familiar level 1, level 2, and level 3 categories with a fame threshold of 1, 16, and 36 respectively. Off the top of the game, everyone gets 12 of these cards. You have to keep eight and return four of them to the box. The cards are text heavy and complicated and they require a good working knowledge of how the game goes. And you can only use magician powers when you play on the expanded dark alley side of the board. For this reason, I don't recommend busting out this add-on with players who are new to the game because in addition to all the decisions they have to make off the top of the game without knowing what the heck is going on, their magician, their magic school, their starting trick, their components, their specialist, plus all the special assignment card nonsense going on in the dark alley. They have to sift through the abilities on 12 different cards and discard four of them off the top of the game. These cards are for advanced play only. I don't know, if you've got a few friends who are really board game savvy and they've got, you know, four or five hours to kill, give her, you know, just chuck them all in. Each Magician Power has a key that shows you which of the four expansion slots it fits in. So this card can't go here, and this card can't go here, but this card can go either here or here. You can learn a new Magician Power at the beginning of every assignment phase, where you're programming where your workers will go. So you can learn one new Magician Power every round at a maximum. To learn a power, the appropriate slot has to be activated with Dracarian Shards. You get three off the top of the game, and they stack from the bottom up the side of your board, like this. Any new shards you earn get added progressively up the track. If you reach the top, any excess shards just accumulate here. When you spend shards, you take them from here first, and then straight down the line from top to bottom. But if you spend shards to the point where the magician power slots are no longer juiced up, you lose those learned powers, and they go back in your hand. If you want to learn a new Magician Power during the assignment phase, and there's already a card in the slot you want to use, you have to take that card back into your hand first, before learning the new power. So, what do the powers do? Well, they're generally nuts, and they get progressively more nuts the higher up the fame threshold you go. Let's take a look at a couple. Clandestine Work, Level 1, Fame Threshold 1. Whenever any of your workers remains idle, so you flipped over that worker's assignment card, you immediately receive money from the supply equal to twice its wage. Public Relations, Level 2, Fame Threshold 16. 
Whenever you place a worker on a location, you may forfeit any number of the received action points before taking actions. If you do, you gain money or fame equal to the number of action points forfeited this way. Grand Finale, Level 3, Fame Threshold 36. If you perform this turn, you may perform an additional performance card at the end of the performance phase. Wowzers! Oh my god, there's my other glove. So, there are a couple of scoring differences when you're using these magician powers. Because you're playing on the dark alley side of the board, you don't get points for any specialists or apprentices you've hired. The instruction manual reminds us that if you have all the components that a 36 point trick requires, even if you've never even prepped or performed that trick, you score the meta point bonus at the bottom of the trick card. And, special for this module only, you no longer score a point for each of your Tricarian shards at the end of the game. So if it's the last round and you've got extra shards, get spending. A Dalgard's Gifts comes with 25 extra shards to make sure you won't run out. The other module is called Duel of Magicians, which is a set of cards that make two-player Tricarian a little more interesting. You get 12 new performance cards and 12 turn setup cards. You build your performance deck using the new cards with the Duel of Magicians symbol on them. They have grey dummy trick markers on them, which simulate a more crowded performance in a game with a higher player count. This makes it easier for you and your opponent to set up trick links. In a normal two-player game of Tricarian, you block off the plus one action point spaces with the unused character discs in order to approximate the kind of scarcity you'd encounter in a game with more players. But that setup is static. The new turn setup cards you get with Dalgard's Gifts go face up next to the board. Use five of them in a regular game, and seven for a dark alley game. That's one card per round. Every round, after you roll the downtown dice, you slide the top card next to the deck and block off the spaces marked on that card. The cards are face up so that you can always plan your strategy one turn in advance. Every round, the blocked off spaces move, keeping you and your opponent on your toes. Finally, Dalgard's Gifts gives you eight new special assignment cards for the Dark Alley expansion. Here's what they do. If you take no risks, you can set one of the downtown dice to whatever you want and roll another before you take your downtown action. If you intrude, you can piggyback an occupied slot. In Market Row, you can use the early bird card to jump the queue and place a worker in Market Row before anyone else gets to take a turn. Or use this Black Market card to buy up to three Tricarian shards for two bucks a piece. In your own workshop, the Magic of Diversity card gives you bonuses depending on the symbol marker of the trick you prepare, while the Double Duty card lets you move a worker you've already used to a different non-theater space and take extra actions. In the theater, Paid Audience lets you ignore Thursday's crummy yield modifier. Or you can get Sunday's better yield modifier even if you perform on Saturday. The Festival of Magic card forces all tricks on all performance cards to get performed at the end of the round. And that's the sum total of what you get with Dalgard's Gifts. Now, gaze upon me with tremulous delight as I magically disappear. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.